Frank Frost here again. We're going to talk about corruption in our court system, in the RCMP, and our politicians today. Uh, by the way, copyrights to this video is mine. Anybody got a problem with that, they can call me at 250-569-0338. Just recently, actually, on January 10th, I appeared in court in McBride. Judge Gray didn't show. Judge Collins was there. I was applying for, uh, have the conditions released from me just so I could see my children. And, of course, he didn't show. The first time I was in court, he had met with Mr. Wagstaff outside the courthouse, told him, and Wagstaff told him, just say that a social worker seen him choke Carrie, my wife, in the bathroom at the Robson Valley Center, of which didn't occur. The second time they said, oh, the children, my beautiful little children, witnessed me do it in the home, in the bathroom. My little children were never subjected to any kind of abuse like that ever. I'm not that kind of man. They make this stuff up as they go along. Now, the other reason he didn't show January 10th is so that the ministry could come into court on the 16th of January and say that she was terrified of me, my wife, terrified, because I was so abusive towards her. She didn't show. As a matter of fact, she hasn't been in court at all. They won't let her in the courtroom. At all. Not whatsoever. On February 3rd, I appeared in court in Prince George. Gray again. McDonald was there. Threw David Amos's file on the, on the table and said, Mr. Frost is delusional. Went on to say that I had told him, and I did, that this file of David Amos's would end his career. And I did say that. I explained to the judge that that file I was using as an example of the corruption across this country involving all our politicians, banks, but especially Power Corp. Now, Power Corp is a corporation that puts all our politicians in place. They pay the, they pay the shot. They're involved in everything from bank fraud to who knows what else. In that file of David Amos's, there was a copy of an FBI wiretap tape outlining multiple murders committed in the East Coast of this country and also one high-level native activist here in British Columbia. Now, those murders were carried out by the mob. The RCMP has known about this for years. David Amos is relentless in his pursuit of justice, as I am, as you well know. I also received a copy of a video and handwritten statement from my wife, Carrie Roop. It was hanging on the door out here. I found out later that Bill Aldersley had dropped it off. She had made her video in his home. I handed that to Judge Gray as a matter of public record. He refused to play the video in open court. I outlined and showed him on her statement that Jeffrey McDonald the Crown Prosecutor that I was standing next to had threatened her. This is her handwriting, her handwritten statement. She signed it. She signed all three pages. 
And it says, Jeffrey McDonald, Crown Prosecutor, he said I had to lie about Frank to shut him up and make this all go away. And if I didn't, he said I would go to prison or to a mental hospital for the rest of my life. That's what they do to her. They threaten and intimidate her. When I left the court, the very next day, I went in and I met with Todd Learning. That was on February 4th. Today is May 4th, three months later to the day. He avoided me for three months, all kinds of excuses, deaths in the family, uh, he was sick, someone else was sick, had an accident, blah, blah, blah. I met with the new corporal that's here to replace pedophile Barry here in McBride and Derek, the guy that's in charge in Valmont here the other day. And they assured me that all of this, including the murder of the child especially, was all going to be investigated to the letter. The next day, I get this. Bill Aldersley dropped by and showed me this. An application to a judge. And on this application, it says, Carrie Rook is requesting that the probation order be terminated so she can move to the Caribbean Islands with Al Adderley. She signed it. She admits to signing it. She told Bill that she didn't make this application. She wasn't going to the Caribbean. Paul Weisbrett, the probation officer, signed this as the application reviewed by him. Five, almost six months, I was trying to get to see my children on an application. He didn't support mine. Now they want her out of the country, whether she wants to go or not. They'll likely pay her and threaten her or whatever. I don't know what they're going to do. But the reality is, if he's going to do that for her, he's sure as fuck going to do it for me. I'm going to hound him until he does. Now, I spoke with Todd Learning the other day on the street when I brought him this. And I told him that there's now a murder investigation, supposedly, by the RCMP. And she is a key witness. And she's not to leave this country. I don't care if she goes. That's entirely up to her. But she's not going until this, everything that she wrote on here and put on her video, is dealt with. I had nothing to do with this. Nothing. Before this happened, I wanted her in prison. Right along with the rest of these goddamn criminals. Like Judge Gray, Judge Callan, Judge Weatherly. Judge Keyes, who I submitted in court the last time, for this, and along with a ministry file that you've already seen posted on my website, of numerous pages, over 200 pages, of criminal acts that they perpetrated against her. She attacked me in court. She didn't address any of this. No, no. No. See, they get their orders from someone up here, like Harper, rah rah sis boom ba, the liberal cheerleader here in British Columbia, Christy Clark, and probably numerous others. Anything to cover this up. I contacted and made a complaint with the Law Society here in British Columbia. You'll see this on my website as well. And this is what I received back. I have reviewed the materials you have provided and sent out a brochure enclosing my, in, enclosed in my letter dated February 12, 2014. The Law Society complaints com 
process is limited to inquiring into a lawyer's conduct and competency. The law society does not intervene in legal pro and procedures. Provide legal advice or change the decision of a court. It is in my view that the issues raised in the correspondence you have provided are not reviewable by the law society and no action will be taken. Now, these this was about McDonald threatening her. This was about Wagstaff, Simon Wagstaff, putting lawyers in her place in court, keeping her out. The last time I was there, as a matter of fact, they set up the security at the front door just to make sure she didn't make it into the courtroom. That's what they do. The court registry works with them, changes documents, changes tapes, whatever it takes to protect these people. Even the judicial case manager gave me a date of March 6th. They heard it on the 3rd because she said, oh, I told you it was the 3rd, but we'll agree to disagree. Then had it on March 10th, off the record. Gray made sure because I told him I withdraw my applications because you let that little prick McDonald into the courtroom and he knew he was a criminal. She said so right here, right here. But no, no, not Judge Gray, no, no. That little prick seized himself at my bail hearing, at my bail hearing. No judge seizes himself with a case at a fucking bail hearing, but he did, because he was the Crown Prosecutor down in Quinnell. When Lonnie Landris got on the stand and told his story about how he witnessed the RCMP there murder a girl, he was the Crown Prosecutor. Judge Blake was the judge called Lonnie a liar, and Lonnie's been fighting ever since to get this out and make these people go after the RCMP for the murders. And I believe that those people and other RCMPs are involved in the murders along the Highway of Tears. Everything points there. Since I mentioned it on my videos, no more girls went missing. Isn't that strange? Eh? 1,700 native women across this country have disappeared. No bodies, no nothing. Because they're doing the same thing here as they did in Bosnia. Human trafficking. Yeah, they murder some. Yeah. But they ship them out mostly. They ship them out. Robert White was charged, but he wasn't convicted. He beat all the charges. But he still had to go back to jail because of breaches that he supposedly had done while he was awaiting trial. Six months he spent in jail and he was innocent. And then they made a plea bargain because they went around the fucking prison saying he was a sexual deviant. Ended up with his jaw broken. And that's what they do. When I was in prison, before the trial, the so-called trial, three months, I couldn't use the phone. My son was told that they didn't know if I was in the prison. I wasn't allowed any visitors, nothing. I get in the courtroom. I tell Judge Gray, oh, sorry, I'll go back a little bit. Judge Brecknell, the only fucking judge that's in this provincial court system here in Prince George with any kind of integrity. I respect you, sir, because he made several orders on my behalf. None were carried out, especially the phone calls. He ordered five phone calls. They were supposed to come on the unit, take me out, and have me on the phone. Not one phone call. I made a phone call from the courthouse, in the courtroom, to have Walter Jervis bring my documents. And then when they got there with the documents, the fucking sheriff department ripped out all the staples, 
took off all the paper clips, shuffled up my papers so I couldn't find nothing. And then everybody that stepped on the stand, Pettibald, Barry, all of them that, that gave evidence that day, including Kerry, who remember now, was paid and threatened to testify against me. All of them lied. Even when I said to her, you don't have to lie. You can tell the truth. Judge Gray will protect you, I said. Ha ha ha! What a fucking joke that was! He sat there and he looked at her. He never said a word. Nothing. Then he proceeded, <coughs> excuse me, to have me sit in prison for another month while he made his decision. And lo and behold, when I got back to the unit, I could now use the phone. I had to pull my own teeth in that prison because they wouldn't pull my teeth. Everything they did to me uh, on their own account is a form of torture. I had two things, constantly. I still do. I had to pull two of my own teeth. Two of them in that fucking unit because they wouldn't pull my teeth. Four months every week I got request after request in my documents here and they wouldn't do it. Not one tooth would they pull. They did the same thing to Robert White. He couldn't use the phone, he couldn't call me, he couldn't call Walter, he couldn't do anything. Nothing. Then they broke into his fucking house looking for his, looking for his evidence that he had against him. <laughs> but Rob White was smart enough to have it stashed where he couldn't find it. Yeah. Now, let's get back to Todd Learning. I cornered him on the street here the day before yesterday. Handed him this and told him that she was now a key witness in a murder investigation. He said, oh no, I'm not investigating that murder. No, not me. No, sir. I said, oh, really? After your corporal and that other Derek from, Va from Vailmont told me that they were going to invest everything she said? Yeah, no, he's not doing it. He said, not in this jurisdiction. So I came home and I faxed her statement off to the appropriate authorities, apparently, in Saanich. Now, two years ago, we tried to get Terry's statement taken. Barry Kennedy refused twice. We went to Vailmont because Steve Essie lined up Trevor in the Vailmont detachment. We went there and he wouldn't answer the door. They wouldn't take her statement. Then they come up with this bullshit story that she said, Oh, I made her say all this. Yeah, I made her say there was a murder. I made her say that all these people were involved. How the fuck would I know any of these people from 25 years ago? I don't know any of these people. Ken Aziz and James Turner. I don't know these people. I know they're pedophiles that molested her from the age of 8 to the age of 12. I'll read to you what she said. They sexually molested me starting when I was 8 years old and stopped when I was 12 years old. That's when she had the child. They were present when the murder took place. There was also one other man, but I can't remember his name. Now, <clears throat> she indicated to me when she heard the name Einar Martin, who was involved in kidnapping our children. She said it sounded familiar to her. She couldn't say for sure because she wanted to see his face. Every attempt that I made to have Einar Martman brought here was stopped. Doug Newman, who's now retired, I spoke with Doug Newman and he told me that he knew there was something more to this story. He couldn't put his finger on it, but he knew there was something more to this story. And she just discussed with him at the time the molestation of Turner and Aziz. There's another piece of information here, and I'll read this to you. 
And this is alongside, of where she's Doug Newman and Barb Weber, who was the other police officer involved in arresting her father for what he did to the children as, uh, when they were children. I was the one who brought the cops to my house to arrest my father for the other crimes, but not the murder. I think they knew about the murder because they dug up the backyard. They said they were looking for guns, but I think they were looking for my baby's body. How would I know that? I don't know any of this shit. She does. That's why they want her gone out of the country. I'm surprised they haven't killed her. She's now a drunk. With the conditions we have, and these fucking conditions they use, instead of crimes being committed, most of the young men on the remand units now are there on a fucking breach of a condition or an undertaking. Yeah. yeah. That's the new scam. Yeah. I couldn't help her. They threw her to the wolves. And they tortured her every day put so much despair in her life as they do with thousands of others. They put so much despair in her life that she is now a drunk. And I believe, as I understand from people around town, she's into methamphetamines too. Anything to stop the pain. Anything to stop the pain. She gave up her parental rights, as you can see in my documents of her other six children to protect them from the courts, the cops, and the Ministry of Children and Families. Can you imagine? To protect them from these people. She gave up her parental rights. You'll also notice they said that she wanted guardianship of the children. That I've been fighting to get back. Nowhere on this application to the judge does it say, I want my children to go to the Caribbean? No. No mention. She doesn't want the children anymore because she wants to protect them from the cops, the courts, and the Ministry of Children and Families Corporation. And they are a corporation. Now the cops told me that they're going to do this investigation, but I am not in the loop. You know why I'm not in the loop? Even though I'm directly involved? Because they don't want me to tell you. I want you, everyone that sees this video, to send it to everyone you know. And right across this world, I have lots of people that are doing that for me, but I encourage everybody. Everybody send it all over the world because they're doing this in other parts of the world as well. Don't think for a minute that the RCMP aren't involved in the Ukraine. And they make it so that Mr. Putin, he's all evil. But we know who the fucking evil ones are. And it isn't Mr. Putin. I can promise you. He's rebuilt his Christian churches. He doesn't have any problem with the Muslim religion. None. Neither do I. But I do have a problem with a bunch of fucking fags. And I say fag because in the dictionary, eh, right here, I'll read it to you so there's no mistake. Fag. To exhaust by hard work, use without. In Britain, to make a fag of, to wear oneself by working. In the British definition, to serve as, as a, to serve as a fag. In English public schools, a boy who does menial service for one in higher class. <laughs> Slang, a homosexual. So you'll excuse me if I don't say gay. 
And you can take whatever you want from the definition. I have. They're trying to stop a law school down here from having fag lawyers in there. Good. They shouldn't be. They're deviants. The majority of faggots are child molesters. We all know that. That's common knowledge. But we're led to believe that it's okay. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Well, it's not okay. And Mr. Putin doesn't think it's okay either. I don't hate these people. I don't think he does either. It's just wrong. That's all. No matter how you slice it, men weren't meant to put their dicks in another man's ass. End of story. And every time anyone here in the Western world says anything negative about a faggot, they're attacked. That but is hate, just like Arthur Totham. He writes in his website, History, about Jews. You know, that's history. It's all out there for everybody to see. But because he puts it in his website, among all kinds of other stuff, including my stuff, Lonnie's stuff, the whole nine yards, of, of crimes being committed by the RCMP and government and what have you. Arthur puts his own spin on it, and he has a right to. But no, they went after him because he, he hates the Jews. He did. Got a guy in the media. He said it openly, publicly. I hate Arthur Toffel. He wasn't charged with a hate crime by Williams. Huh? No, no. No, no. Harry Abram. Eh? And what's that other fucker's name? Warman. Eh? They made him take those names off his website. They're the ones who brought charges against him, but they don't want their name out there. Oh, no. Oh, no. They don't want to be involved in that. They just charged him, that's all. They've made 11 attempts on Lonnie Landry's life. But that's okay. That's okay. No problem there. Yeah. And this is the cops I'm talking about. Trying to shut him up. They're trying to shut everybody up. There's a show coming on tonight. On 16 by 9 talking about the Esterbrook case, where a cop over 25 years molested 263 children in St. John, New Brunswick. I did that story on one of my videos. Now one part that got, that got uh, accidentally uh, not mentioned was that all those children, not all of them, most of them, went to the cops and those cops were bringing the children to him, by the way. And they went to the Ministry of Social Services, the social workers. They said in the article, they turned a blind eye. In a fucking pig's eye! They handed those children, handed them to that fucking pedophile. Now the show is all about how come it took so long for this to come out. Well, I'll tell you why. Because none of the mainstream media would listen to those children. None of the mainstream media listens to me. They haven't done nothing. I fax them my documents every time I get a new one. They got it all. Even her father. Everything. Not one word have they said. Not one word. That's why the social media is so important. So that the truth can be heard. You're not going to hear it in the courts. No matter what evidence you submit in a courtroom, in the provincial court here in British Columbia, and I have no reason to believe that it's not like that right across this country. Not one bit of evidence that I produce in a court was addressed. Not once. 
not once. They only attacked me because I presented it as a matter of public record. Just like they attacked David Amos. They won't even say his name because he's a very brilliant man. Knows all about bank fraud and power corp and the criminal acts that the RCMP have perpetrated against him and many others. Many others. They even want to send him to Guantanamo Bay. Tried to say in court he was a lunatic. Yeah, talk to David Amos and you will see how much of a lunatic he is. I'm going to tell you what, he tells it like it is. Very brilliant man. Arthur Toffman tells it like it is too. Watch his website. I don't know where else, what else to tell you other than I have no expectation of these people investigating the murder of this child or any other allegations that are brought to them. I'm growing my beard and my hair now in protest. Keep watching my videos. I expect my beard to be very, very long and my hair down to my fucking ass because they're not going to do nothing. They're going to protect their own. The people at the top are giving orders and that's the oath that the RCMP take, by the way, if you don't know. I will follow orders. There's nothing in the oath of the RCMP to help you or me. Nothing. Now, I'm going to keep you informed as long as you don't come along with some bullshit charge or some fucking breach that I'm supposed to have done. And I haven't breached. Not one article of my conditions have I breached. So, if they do arrest me, you're going to know it's an arbitrary arrest. Nothing I can do to stop them from doing it. Couldn't care less. But I do know that I'm not participating in provincial court anymore because I already know the corruption is there. Judge Gray, Judge Weatherly, Judge Callan, and now Judge Keyes, criminals, baby murdering pedophiles, all of them. The only fucking judge is in the provincial court in Prince George that actually goes by the charter. Oh, by the way, the charter stops outside the door and on the street when I enter that courtroom. So that's why I'm not going to go in the courtroom. I'll stay out on the street. Thank you. The only one that's there is Judge Bechtel that goes by the charter. He's tried to help me, but his orders don't make it to the registry. When they do, the registry makes sure that they're not implicated. Implemented, I should say. BC Corrections is corrupt as shit. All of them are. All of them. We have to now restructure our whole system, our whole judicial system. The only way that we can succeed in that is to get rid of that fucking bitch in England. Her name, they do this all in her name. I'm taking this into federal court and I'll discover all the corruption there for you too. And I'm sure they won't disappoint me. No. Everything is done in her name. Every action that they've taken. And I have fed them fucking rope all along. I tell them everything I'm doing. Just like I'm telling you. And they never disappoint me. They always do the wrong thing. And it's always illegal. Always. They break their own laws. They breach the charter. They don't give a fuck about a charter when it comes to me. They just want to shut me up. Because they don't want me talking to you. And that's as simple as that. The Charter of Rights is what they use to charge you. You can't use that to defend yourself when you're in a position like me. At all. Not for one minute has the Charter ever worked for me. Judge Brecknell tried. Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. So there's no point in going in front of Judge Brecknell anymore either. As I said, I respect him. I have no respect for the mother fucking baby murdering pedophiles. None. They're criminals. And I'm going to see to it 
that you're put in prison where you belong, right along with all the rest of the social workers and lawyers involved, and the cops. But my beard will be long and my hair will be long, I do promise you, because it's going to be a long, arduous road. I expect it to be a long, arduous road. I wrote Peter McKay. He sent me this fucking letter back. After 10 weeks telling me on here that he sent my information, he only gives, oh sorry, he only gives legal advice to the government. He doesn't work for you and me. No, no, we just pay him, just like we do the rest. He sent it to Stephen Blaney. Now he's, he's the Minister of Public Safety. I sent letters off to him, spoke to his aide on the phone. Yeah, now they want 10 weeks to respond to me. Eh? Told me they were so swamped with complaints. Now isn't that something? Last year they came out and they said they only had about 15 complaints against the RCMP. But he's going to fucking take 10 weeks to respond to me because of the complaints of the RCMP? <laughs> What a fucking joke. We'll never know the truth unless you listen to people like me. As I find out the truth, I will tell you. I don't care that they got me blocked out of this investigation because it's not happening anyway. I know that. But I will find out what they didn't or did do. I have little birdies everywhere. Oh yeah. And they tell me everything. And these are people in their circles. Because not everyone in their circle is as fucking rotten as they are. Not everyone. Anyway, I'll keep you informed. And if something else comes to mind, I'll write it down and I'll make a new video. But in the meantime, protect yourselves. Protect yourselves from these people. The ones that are supposed to be protecting you. Protect yourselves. Do whatever, makes, whatever means it takes to protect yourself. That's why they took our guns. Because they knew all of this stuff was going to come out. They're building new prisons. Well, I'm hoping that those new prisons are built to house them and their families. Because that's where it's going. There's militia groups already in place here in this country. They've contacted me. gave me a few things of what they were going to do and my response to that was <clears throat> I've been down that path and at this point I'm not interested in going down that path. I want to be here to tell you and show you exactly the corruption that we're up against. As for you people in the militia groups, you go and do whatever you feel is necessary. I don't know if you're right or wrong. All indications are that you're right. I don't know. But anyway, do whatever you feel is necessary. And I'll do whatever I feel is necessary. And we'll see how it all unfolds. I know I would be totally fucking delusional if I thought for one minute that the RCMP, the Ministry of Children and Families, or any other fucking government agency or representative is going to do the right thing because it's not in their vocabulary. They are willing to go to great lengths to protect their way of life. Not yours, not mine. We're peasants. We don't come in the picture. Just their way of life they want to protect. Just like they're trying to impose all over the world. Yeah. Their way of life they want to protect. Not you, not me. And certainly not our children our most valuable resource.
are beautiful children. They don't want to protect them. They just want to stick their dirty fucking dicks in them. That's all. And murder them. And brainwash them into thinking that being gay is okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure it is. For the faggots that want to stick their fucking dirty dicks in my children. But I'm going to do everything I can. And I want you to help me. All of you out there to help me protect our children from this vermin. Every one of them are sacred to our way of life. Every one of them. All over the world. All my children are important. And all of them need our protection. I'll do my best to protect all my children. That includes the faggot children. I'll protect them too. Jewish children, Muslim children, Buddhist children, Christian children, and any other fucking religion that you can mention. They're all important. They're all to be protected by us. We are in control of that. And that's my main concern. My children. All of them. Not just some of them. And don't nobody fucking hurt none of my children going after these motherfuckers. Don't hurt. No innocence. Because that's what it's coming down to. You want to go after these people? Go after them. Not innocent people sitting in a restaurant. Not innocent people walking down the street and little children. That's not the ones that are responsible for the things that you don't like and what's happening around the world. They don't have any say in any of that any more than you and I do. Go after the ones that do have to say. They're the ones that say, I work for you. You bet. Well, now we know they don't. Huh? What can I tell you? We all have an, a part to play. We are all socially and morally responsible for our children. All of them. So let's get on with it. Let's get it done. Let's make sure that our children are protected, loved, and cared for. And any fucking one that's abusing my children, you're going to pay the price. I promise you. You can put that in your pipe and smoke it. And it's not only me now. There's hundreds of millions of people that have viewed my videos and listened to what I have to say. Hundreds of millions. Not one of them disagree with me. Not one. Now, that puts me in a totally different category than you, you dirty motherfuckers, that are sticking your dirty dicks in my children and murdering my children. I'm going to end by saying this. You talk about a new world order. Well, there's going to be a new world order, people. But you're not going to be a part of it. The people will speak. We will have the final say. Not you. And we'll make sure. We'll make sure that the people that are supposed to be doing their jobs and working for us are actually doing their jobs and working for us. All of us. All over the world. Not you dirty motherfuckers that have proven to be unworthy. Don't think for one minute 
that you are going to win and come out on top because nobody comes out on top when these sorts of things go on. Nobody. You can protect these people for the interim, but you're not going to protect them forever and you're not going to protect them from everyone. Mark my words. I'll be in touch with all of you. But remember, excuse me, send my videos, all your friends, even the people you don't like. Send them everywhere, all over the world, so that the world knows what we're up against. Take care of each other. Watch each other's backs. And love and protect your children. All of them. Have a nice day.